Hello everyone and welcome to Revelation Horsemanship. I have my dog with me today. So if you hear a noise in the background, that's what it is. Um, last week you will remember that we discussed the role repentance plays in our relationship with the Lord. Not only in drawing us closer to the Lord, but in realizing how much He loves us and how much we can come to love Him. You may also remember that we discussed how repentance works. It's uh, something that when we repent, we don't just repent and then continue to sin, but we repent and then turn 180 from our sin toward the Lord. So the, the point of today's lesson, or this week's lesson, is this returning to the Lord. So once we repent, it's time to do that 180 and face Him because He's going to bring us into the proper relationship with Him and there'll no longer be that barrier of sin. Okay, so you might already be thinking about what we will be discussing today or what scripture verse. There's a really good one and it's, it's fairly common. You might be familiar with it that has to do with repenting and returning and it's the parable of the prodigal son. So if you will turn with me now to Luke 15, we're going to review this really briefly. I'm going to kind of summarize it, but I want you to read it. So read Luke 15. In fact, this is the only where, the only place in the Bible where there is the parable of the prodigal son is in Luke. It's not in the other Gospels. Okay, so Luke 15. Uh, just a quick review. A father has two sons, and the younger son comes to him one day and demands his inheritance from the father. The father obliges the request, and the son quickly whisks away his money and runs off to another country and spends it frivolously uh, and gets involved in sin and extravagant living, basically. And after he is um, has spent all the money and is basically broke, he takes a job to survive feeding pigs. So hungry and broke, he realizes what... A bad mistake he made and he wants to go back to his father and apologize he hopes that his father will at least accept him as just a servant in his household so he returns home and the father welcomes him with open arms and they have a big celebration now there's an older brother in this story and the older brother is really angry at the younger brother because the older brother has not spent his inheritance. He didn't even ask for it. And he has been obedient all this time. And he can't understand why he's been obedient and, have, and has not gotten a party. And his younger brother has been so disobedient and sinful and has gotten this large party where everybody is celebrating his return. Okay, so that's kind of it in summary. And what we know about this story is that it is a parable, and oftentimes uh, Jesus used parables to explain a spiritual point. So the spiritual point of this story is really um, emphasizing our relationship with the Lord, that no matter what we do, no matter what sin we commit, the Lord is always there welcoming us with open arms when we repent and return. That's basically the gist of this. So a couple of things to note about this story that I found interesting. One, in Jewish society, there were rules about, um, or I'm sorry, laws really, regarding how inheritances were to be divided. So in this case of two brothers, the oldest brother would legally receive two-thirds of the inheritance, and the younger brother would receive one-third. And they also wouldn't receive the inheritance until their father passed. So isn't it interesting that here the younger brother is requesting his inheritance and the father is not even dead. He is not even passed. And he is going to him and saying, hey, I want what's mine. Give me what is due. And not only that, but um, when he gets it, you know, he, he spends it unwisely and he engages in sin. So in, in this story, the father obliges the son and 
and gives him the money. He indulges him. What's interesting about this is that our Heavenly Father at times will indulge us when we ask for something. And we have the potential to also misuse our blessings and uh, His provision for our own glory or for our selfish endeavors. But the Lord, you know, He gave us freedom of choice. And sometimes He'll indulge us knowing that we are going to learn a great lesson from it. So sometimes just because we may receive what we thought we wanted doesn't always mean <laughs> that it's the right way to go. And so having that, that deep relationship with the Lord, that committed relationship where we are really seeking His will and we're repenting of the things that we know to be sin in our lives is very important so that we can know His will, so that we don't just take circumstances as our answer, or at least circum uh, that we don't take circumstances alone as our answer, um, that we, we have a peace about decisions that we make because we know that God gave us that peace, that we've read His Word and we know that His Word is true and it's, it's what it's saying to us is His will that uh, potentially other Christians that we trust have um, confirmed what God is saying and what He is saying in His Word. Not just circumstances, because we can, we can ask for things that um, will get us in a lot of trouble, and, and He may give us what we want sometimes so that we can learn that lesson, but we don't have to learn that lesson that way. We don't have to learn it the hard way. God can... Um, he can reveal His will so that we don't have to learn it the hard way. But sometimes we do. We've all been there, right? The, the second thing that um, is important about this parable has to do with repentance, which is why we, we studied it last week, because what we see here in this parable is that true repentance has to happen before we can return. So if you look at uh, what the prodigal son did in verse 18, he says, Father, I have sinned against you. So he's confessing and acknowledging what he knows to be true about what he did. In verse 19, the first part of verse 19, um, he says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He's starting to uh, realize that he really, you know, the inheritance that was promised to him was a gift. He didn't necessarily deserve that. Uh, in verse 19, the second part of verse 19, he says, treat me as one of your servants. He's starting to realize and humble himself before his father. And these three things are important in our relationship with the Lord, the humility, the um, acknowledgement of our sin. So then the last thing, the third thing, that is interesting about this parable has to do really with the eldest son and his response to not only his brother returning home but his father. The eldest son gets really angry and uh, he, again he can't understand why in the world his, <laughs> the youngest brother is having this great party when he's been so obedient all these years. Um, and here's the father's response to his son, his eldest son, when, when he's confronted with this anger. He, the father says to the eldest son, you are always with me. And so it kind of calms the fears, or it could have calmed the fears of the eldest son to rem reminding him that he hasn't lost his place in the family. He's still the eldest son. He, he's always been a son. And the second thing he says, the father says to the eldest son, is all that is mine uh, is yours. And so he, again, um, comforts the son, saying, you still have your inheritance. You haven't lost that. It's always been, it's always been there. It's always been waiting for you. So, for your homework, I thought it would be interesting for us. I feel like I've done this before, and maybe that's why... Uh, it came to my mind, and I'm going to do it again with all of you. I want you to think about where you are in your life today. 
wherever you are, which son do you relate to the most where you are today? Do you relate to the eldest son who is so angry, um, who's done everything the right way, and then he's watching his uh, younger brother get all the accolades for running off and doing bad and then coming home? <laughs> um, are, are you able to relate to him more, or are you able today to relate more to the youngest son. Maybe you have in some area of your life strayed and you feel like you can't return. Maybe you have strayed and you have repented and you've returned, but you still have some guilt over that sin, which the Lord doesn't want you to have. But those are just some examples of possibly being able to relate to the youngest son. So your homework is to think about which son you're relating to today and to go to the Lord with that. Because either way, you're going to want to do a 180 and turn from the sin, the sin of the guilt or the sin of the real sin <laughs> or the sin of possibly being angry and bitter. You want to turn away from that and turn toward the Lord. And he's there. He's there waiting with open arms, as this parable describes. And he's got the same promises for you that he has for the prodigal son and the same promises that he has for the eldest son. Okay, so this is going to be a, this is going to be a good exercise. I look forward to hearing a little bit about uh, how this is going for you this week. You can share on the Facebook page. And if you haven't already, sign up. Um, for our YouTube channel. So be a subscriber and you will get the videos as they come out. Please check your emails too because I do put text or content in the emails that relate to the videos. So it would be good to check your emails as well. And then I'll be um, sending out a horsemanship email this week. I'm not sure if we'll have a video. Um, I have an idea of what I want to send um, and it may or may not include a video but you're going to want to read it. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.